Well, thank you for the introduction. Um, my first presentation is about a systematic review and a meta-analysis on the association, indeed, between Dupuytrens and diabetes. Um, well, we declare that uh, Professor Werker is a consultant for Pfizer and Sobe, and Professor van der Heuvel is a consultant for Merck. There are no further conflicts of interest. Well, as you all know, uh, Dupuytrens disease has often been linked in the literature to other diseases, such as diabetes, but there are some discrepancies in the results. Uh, mostly, there is an association found, but there are also studies that do not find such an association. So we thought, well, why is there this di discrepancy? Um, we think that part of the, uh, the differences are caused by the heterogeneity between the study populations. Uh, but also many studies uh, do not correct for age. And we saw frequently that uh, in many papers, uh, the control group was much younger than the diabetes group. So it would be obvious that you find a higher prevalence in the diabetes group. And it might also be that some studies were underpowered. So the aim of this study was to examine the strength and the consistency of this association between the two diseases. We did a literature search on July the 11th in 2013 using databases of Medline, Embase, and Web of Science, and we updated this search on July the 17th in 2014. And we used the following keywords. And uh, to determine the association, we performed a random effects meta-analysis uh, using STATA and uh, to see whether this effect sustained after correcting for age. We did a generalized linear mixed model analysis with the following specifications, and this was done in SPSS, and all analysis were done with a significance level of 5%. Well, the initial search yielded uh, 1,308 articles, uh, of which 1,217 were unique articles, and um, all these articles were, uh, titles and abstract were screened, and uh, we excluded uh, the majority of them, resulting in 101 artic articles entering the uh, full text analysis. And then we excluded 69 uh, paper papers because of uh, the fact that there was no physical exam done to diagnose DD. It was a case series or a conference proceeding. Uh, there were no original data reported or not enough data reported, and there was no uh, age reported. So finally, uh, we ended up with 32 articles that were entered in the analysis. Well, the meta odds ratio of the association between diabetes and Dupuytren's disease was 3.4, and the range uh, of the odds ratio was 1 to 51.9, so the direction of the uh, odds ratio is consistent, and there are no odds ratios below 1. But as you can see, this range is quite big, and the following plot will show you what exactly happened. This is a forest plot for the people who don't know. Um, these are the 32 studies, papers that were included in this analysis. And um, as you can see, uh, you see the different odds ratios uh, and the different weights. And the larger the study, the larger the weight. And um, uh, one of the studies, we'll see whether it's pointer works. Yes. Uh, the Savas, study of Savas was the study with a very high odds ratio of almost 52, and that is caused by the fact that uh, the sample size was very small, as can be seen by this small figure, and the weight was also very low. Uh, so that might be responsible for this big range. And the dotted line in this figure is the meta odds ratio, and that is this red line. And as you can see, it is 3.36, 3.4. Well, we did correct for age, and uh, the effect uh, sustained after correcting for age, and there are many numbers in this table, but the most important ones are these. As you can see, uh, the effect of diabetes was still uh, significant, and the odds ratio, odds ratio was even a little bit higher. So we can say that uh, diabetes is significantly associated with Dupuytren's disease, and we think that researchers should control for this association when they are doing research, and they can do it in their study design or in the statistical analysis. And the strength of the study is that we did not have uh, limits with respect to the publication date, and that is important because uh, many of the studies on this topic were done in the early 50s or in 60s, and we also corrected for age, which was uh, not previously done. 
and we used a random effects analysis uh, to address the uh, study heterogeneity. A limitation of the study is that we were not able to uh, define uh, the effect for the different types of diabetes, uh, since most of the papers did not report the type of diabetes. So that's a question that remains unanswered.